This tutorial will show you how to complete the uh, tasks on 7.1, create layer styles using Photopea rather than Photoshop, the existing directions that are here. I know a lot of students currently don't have access to Photoshop. So here's how it goes with Photopea. I do believe that the basic styles are still available in Photopea. There's a whole bunch of other things that Photoshop can do that, although I demonstrated in the classroom with Photoshop, I may not be doing that with Photopea, but just know that the basic uh, styles, the ones that are listed here, Drop Shadow, Inner Shadow, Outer Glow, I do believe they're all in the Photopea environment. And rather than doing the very basic uh, assignment that is uh, that was presented for Photoshop, this one is, is still going to be pretty basic, but we'll be creating something rather than just squares and not something very complicated. It's going to be just a happy face. I'm going to open up a new tab and go to PhotoP. It's PhotoP.com and the, uh, the web app loads up. I'm going to give myself a little bit more space by getting rid of those shortcuts if I can. And I cannot. I don't know why I'm having problems with those today, but Let's see if this is enough space to do it anyway. File, new to create a new project. Your shortcut is Alt, Control, N. If you are in a Chromebook or a Mac, it might be a little different, but File, New will definitely get you here. At the bottom, if you're in Social, um, you can uh, select the 1080 by 1080 size. That's the Instagram size. That's just a square. That's 1080 by 1080 PX. That's 72 DPI. This is actually the same... Uh, uh, dimensions as your midterm and the final. I'll create. The background is white and that's fine. I'm pressing control zero to just to double check that it fits and that's that's okay. I can press control plus to zoom in, control minus to zoom out. And let's see. Oh, I can I get a little bit more space, just a little bit. Control zero and I'm in. So I have a background and since we're working with layer styles, this is one thing about layer styles. Layer styles, which in Photoshop have an FX uh, button at the bottom of the right column. Uh, PhotoP has an EFF layer style uh, button at the bottom for the same thing. If I click on that, it'll show me that basically the uh, things that are shown in the uh, in the assignment, the ones that I was talking about. At here, the drop shadow, inner shadow, etc. And that's uh, what PhotoP is telling us. So you can do a drop shadow, you can do an outer glow, and all of these basic things. Um, one thing to know, as I was saying, is that the layer styles, the effects in PhotoP, as, as in Photoshop, only live in layers. So right now I'm in the background. This is a flat image. I'm going to need to create a new layer. A new layer, fortunately, it's very similar to Photoshop. It's this icon at the bottom right. I don't think that you saw that when I hover it said new layer. Maybe you did. I hope you did. I think that there's also a layer icon or layer menu item at the top. You can say layer and then create a new layer in case you don't have access to the bottom buttons. Now I'm in a transparent layer, which I can change the name of by double clicking on the name and I'll just call it something like shapes and it's an old uppercase and that's fine. I'm going to do a real basic thing just to show you how this works. I'm going to select the rectangle uh, selection here. It's the uh, rectangular marquee in Photoshop. If you click and hold, you also have an ellipse select, which we'll use for the happy face later. Uh, it's the elliptical marquee in Photoshop. I'll stick with the rectangle and just I'll draw a shape, and this is just a selection more than anything. It's not really a shape, so I can see the marching ants there in shapes. I'm going to fill it with a color. I'm going to select the color first in my palette. I clicked on the bottom. Mine was currently yellow. I'll pick something like red. Click OK. Go to the Edit menu and tell it to fill it with the foreground color, which is red. Click OK. I'll deselect. I think I can press Control D. Yes, to deselect or go through that menu item. With your move tool, you can still move the shape like you could in Photoshop. That's great. Now, this free-folding uh, shape is in a layer 
separately just like it would be in Photoshop. See how if it goes outside of the area, you still have control over it. I'm going to then, since I am in shapes as opposed to background, anything that I do with effects will affect the shape inside of that layer. Let's do something simple like a drop shadow. Let me move this to the side so you see what's going on. The lighting is coming from above uh, to the right. I want it to come from another angle. I usually use 35 degree angle. And uh, I don't know that it's gonna work for me, but I'll switch it anyway. Well, that's interesting. So this is actually, it has a different uh, starting point than Photoshop. So I'll do it manually, which is, just as well because then I can control it just like I could in in, uh, in Photoshop. I have my um, drop shadow there as a style. I can change the uh, function of the style by saying you know I want a larger spread or I want a longer distance for the shadow or a larger size. You can also change the opacity to make it darker. You can uh, you can do a lot of things with this as you can in Photoshop. You can even change the uh, color. What if I wanted a red uh, shadow instead of a black one? I pick one there. I'll click OK. I'll click OK, and now I have this style effect that exists. Because and I know that currently here where I see this EFF, it's telling me like it would in Photoshop with an FX that layer styles are being applied to this layer. If I right click, I can do a couple of things uh, very similar to what I could in Photoshop. I can copy this layer style or I can paste it if, once I copy it. By that I mean if I copy this, I can create a new layer, uh, go and do a new shape. Let's, and I'll do a, a circle this time and I'll click uh, here. I'll pick a different color. I'll say blue, click OK. Fill it with blue, edit, fill. And nothing happens because I haven't told it to do anything other than create this shape. I hit deselect. I will right click on this layer, which is now, I'll say this is blue circle. And uh, right click on it and tell it on layer style to paste. So now this red uh, effect that I have on this other layer has been copied here. Notice how it's applied to the layers, not necessarily applied to the shape. What I mean by that is that although the shape has this red um, shadow, when you move it, because it's in that layer, it will keep on happening. And if I were to change the effect by double clicking on that F, EFF, it gives me the options that I had before. I can say, okay, well, I have this, uh, this, uh, this uh, drop shadow that has a red tinge to it i can say okay well for this since it's blue i'm going to select blue and now it's got a blue shadow and i copied and pasted um what else can i tell you about this real quick well there's other things uh, color overlay gradient overlay these are explained in the assignment and i will try to find uh, to see if there's a uh, photo P specific directions on this or rather further reading. Uh, there is lots of further reading included for Photoshop. I, I encourage you to go and look at that since it will definitely help you out with your photo P experience as well. Before I complete this uh, tutorial, let me create one more layer. Notice how I turned off the layers just like I could in Photoshop. That way they're out of the way and in my new layer I'll start my happy face. The happy face is going to be basically a ellipsis and if I draw the circle notice how it's oval or round if I press and hold the shift key it will be a circle. I have the selection made as a circle I'll tell it to go edit and fill with uh, my foreground color. Let me see, can I get a custom color? Yes, I could by clicking on custom, clicking on the palette itself, and then picking the yellow color. So now I have a yellow circle. I'll deselect, select, deselect, or control D. Use my move tool to move the circle to the middle. And similarly to Photoshop, I'll get the uh, markers come up whenever I'm in the middle. 
I'll start to play with this to make it a happy face. I want it to be sort of like a button that you would wear on your shirt if it were the 1970s. So let's see, what can I do next? I can apply an effect and tell it to bevel and emboss. So this is going to give it a little bit of depth. I wish I had a larger screen, but I don't. Okay, so let's move this out of the way. The depth here is going to be in percentage. The uh, size will bring it up a little bit more. I see it's a little bit too dark for me. I'm going to soften it up so that it looks more like a shade rather than just uh, this groove thing around the opacity or the inner bevel actually since that's what I'm working with I'm going to see if I can change the color or rather the opacity just so that it's not so dark there you go in the mode that's multiplying I give it a little bit less so that it looks a little bit more natural I'll click OK because now I've applied this effect that sort of gives it that that look like it's 3D. I'm going to add the uh, eyes and I'm going to do that in a separate layer and I'll call this eyes. I'm going to use the same ellipse select to draw an oval here and I'll say edit and fill and I'm going to fill this with black. Click OK. I'll click outside with my selection. You could also go select, deselect and with the move tool i can sort of get an idea of where i want that eye to be i can use the rectangle select or even the elliptical select but i'll use the rectangle select so that i can select around that eye and tell it to edit and copy so now it's pasted that it's actually copied that eye i'll i did the select select the select edit paste and I get a layer one if I use the move tool the layer one then reveals that I have actually a second eye I'll try to get them as uh, as aligned as I can and now layer one and eyes uh, don't have to be separate layers but I like them so I'll click on layer one press and hold the shift key and then click on the second layer that has the eyes name on it right click on it and tell it to merge the layers that way layer one which i'll rename again will be the eyes the effect that i added below here in black i'm going to try to do the same thing with the eyes but a little bit differently i'll right click and tell it to give me a layer style of well and i'm not going to paste it where am i going i'm going to do the effects sorry about that i'm going to bevel and emboss and now I sort of see how, because it's giving me the black, the uh, darkened on the right side is actually lightening it up on the top. So this will work fine. I'll change the opacity a little bit higher so that they shine a little bit more. Maybe do the size not so large so that the eyes look a little bit better. And now I have that going. And finally, in my last, for my last trick, I'm going to uh, create a new layer and I'm going to click and hold the rectangle select to get the ellipse select. That way I can press and hold the shift key and this is going to vary. Your mileage may vary in this. I'm drawing a circle and what I'm looking at, I'm looking at the lower part of the circle and sort of imagining of where the smile might be so that when I go and edit and fill with black, I get the circle over it. Rather than drawing another one, I'm going to right click on layer one, tell it to make a copy, duplicate layer, just like you do in Photoshop, and then move this to the, a little bit higher than the original one. So layer one copy is the same circle as below, uh, and at the same size. I'm pressing, I press shift, by the way, when I moved it up so that it would be at about the same, uh, at the same place. And this, the reason why I did this, made these two circles because the top one is going to be very important i'm going to see if i can press control and click on the layer one copy and what that did it created a selection of the top that way if i press the backspace key on layer one you can't really see it here until i hide the layer one copy i get this uh, 
Well, yes, I admittedly kind of creepy smirk on the uh, happy face, but I can always press Control D to deselect layer one, which has the happy face or the happy smile. Uh, I can select it and I'll double click that and I'll say smile. And I'm using my move tool to move it a little bit lower here. I'm going to use the transform controls to make it a little bit lower and I can actually make it a little bit smaller and I can play with the size and maybe it won't be so creepy. Once I'm done making those changes, I can turn off the transform controls and there's my smirking face rather than happy face. Could I add the effect to the smirk? Sure. If I go to eyes and right click on EFF layer style copy, let me try that again, layer style copy. Go to the smile, right click, layer style paste, and now that sort of has that. If you are working on a Chromebook, you know that you should go to File and Save As uh, PSD, and that'll save it on your Chromebook, uh, your actually your um, Google Drive. Uh, for Photoshop users, or rather for PC users, make sure that you save it like you would any other any other project, and just call it layer styles or something like that and uh, this will try to save it as an Adobe Photoshop image this is version 21 the one that I have installed in my computer so because it's got the PSD it'll think it's a PSD file uh, luckily though this will open up in your photo P and it will open up in Photoshop once you have access to it again uh, so that's it for the layer styles. Um, if you have any questions, as, as usual, just uh, shoot me an email. Thanks a lot.